Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our latest expert Q&A session of the Alibaba.com digitization sprint for retailers. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing the basics of starting, operating, and protecting your new online business. So if you've tuned into one of these expert Q&As before, uh, you'll know that in 2020, uh, 600,000 more new businesses were started than in 2019. Uh, this is according to the National Bureau of Economic Research. Interestingly enough, one third of these businesses are retailers who are not tied to a physical store. So many of these 200,000 new online businesses are part of a newly emerging group of entrepreneurs. These new digital entrepreneurs are building businesses enabled by new online infrastructure that allows them to operate their own business to consumer e-commerce stores on platforms like Shopify or WooCommerce, or as third-party sellers on retail commerce sites like Etsy, Amazon, and Walmart. So today we're joined by Ryan Pidelak, uh, the founder and CMO of Zen Business which is a low cost business formation service empowering the next generation of entrepreneurs, small business owners and freelancers by making it easier than ever to start, run and grow a successful business. I can't think of a better person to join us for this specific topic. So I'm excited to welcome Ryan here today to share his experience with us and offer advice to our audience of entrepreneurs on how they can quickly get started, filling out the proper paperwork, uh, ensuring ongoing compliance uh, and make sure they are positioned well for growth. So Ryan, thank you for being here. Um, I touched a little bit on this entrepreneurial renaissance that the US is currently experiencing and I wanted to get your take on it. Why is now such an exciting time to start a new business and how does Zen Business fit in with this equation? Yeah, and Kate, thanks for having me here as well. So uh, what we've seen over the past couple of years is that more and more people are just reassessing their personal lives and uh, making the move to become entrepreneurs. And, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic accelerated this trend, as you mentioned. And, you know, we've watched as a significant number of people left their jobs um, to kind of finally live their dreams and become their own boss. And at Zen Business, we've actually grown 400% since May 2020 when the pandemic began and now support over 200,000 entrepreneurs on their journeys to success. And you know what we've learned from our customers is that many people are finding that the benefits of becoming an entrepreneur outweigh the challenges. You know, mm -hmm. So uh, according to a recent uh, survey that we ran, the top reason why our customers decided to dive into entrepreneurship was to be their own boss and pursue something that they're passionate about. And, you know, Zen Business plays a unique role in this trend. You know, we're the only complete guided platform for entrepreneurs to start, run and grow a business. And, you know, in short, we have everything an aspiring business owner needs to take their business idea and make it a reality. And, you know, we've revolutionized the process of starting a business and are excited to continue watching as hundreds of thousands of successful small business owners get their start on our platform. Great, thanks for that. Um, all right, let's start at the beginning. Um, is there a checklist I need to go through when I'm starting my own online business? Can you walk our audience through the very basic steps they need to take? Yeah, I mean, starting a business definitely can feel daunting. Um, but there are a few things that entrepreneurs should do when launching their new business. And uh, maybe you can think about it as like three basic but very important steps. You know, the first thing is that you need to uh, file your business. And any person starting a business, either online or offline, should consider forming an LLC. Um, they could also form a C Corp or an S Corp, but some sort of um, actual corporate entity. An LLC tends to be the easiest. And an LLC provides the owner from individual responsibility for any debt or lawsuits that could occur. So it's this extra layer of protection, protection between you and your personal assets in the world. Um, and it's just a great option for uh, first time business owners. 
And, um, and that's really important, right? If you have personal assets that you're trying to protect. The second thing is that you're gonna to need to get a business bank account. So it's important to separate your personal transactions from your business transactions. Mm -hmm. And so one of the most important tools a small business owner can have is a business bank account. Um, and the business bank account plays a significant role also in the future of the company because forming this relationship with your bank may lead to financing opportunities um, that can help you as you grow. And then the third thing that people really need to do is they need to build a website. So to build awareness and to find potential customers, you really need a solid website. Um, and this like website can act as a hub for your SEO efforts, which will mm -hmm. draw new leads uh, and customers to you from search engines like Google. It also gives you a place to send uh, people to when you're sharing your uh, business or, you know, in the case of an e-commerce company, your products on um, social and other channels. And so, you know, you can establish your online presence, you know, with an easy to use website builder. Um, and, you know, you'll need to secure and maintain a domain name, you know, which gives you the control of your business's website address. And, and the interesting thing is we found that the customers who have a website make upwards of $15,000 more per year than don't who have a web presence. So it's very important. Wow, that's a really interesting stat, um, particularly for this audience who is uh, really focused on e-commerce. Um, so thank you for that. All right, I've got my business set up. I've got my product selling. Um, what do I need to stay compliant? So there's rules, regulations, taxes. These things are fluid. They're changing all the time. Like I'm, I'm busy building my business. How do I stay on top of kind of these table stakes? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, we uh, did an analysis looking at uh, people after their first year of starting a business, and we were surprised by how many people uh, forgot to file their annual filing. And this annual filing is uh, necessary for you to stay in good standing with the state. And so, you know, failing to remain compliant with state required annual reports and filing deadlines can put you in bad standing with the state. And this can expose you to costly fines, but also losing your LLC protection during that period, which, you know, can create this personal risk and liability that you're trying to protect yourself from as an LLC. Now, I mean, the LLC isn't this, this magical panacea that protects you personally from all risk. I mean, you still personally have... Um, uh, responsibilities as, uh, you know, doing things in a, um, in a truthful manner. But the reality is that um, if you then remove that LLC protection uh, due to falling into bad standing, then it's like it wasn't there in the first place. And that, that can be bad if you get sued during that that time period. So you're going to want to stay on top of that. Uh, you know, as part of our offering, you know, we have this annual Tax, franchise uh, tax filings, annual report filing that you know we'll do on behalf of our customers if they sign up for it, just to make it you know, easy. But you know, um, you also need to take care of your taxes. So uh, businesses, you know, must know and follow the laws around federal, state, and local taxes. And the smartest tax advice I can give somebody who you know may be looking to do it themselves um, is to just make sure they're doing it accurately and on time. So uh, we ran a survey and the longer someone owns a business, actually, the more likely they are to seek outside help with their taxes. Um, and, you know, interesting, a professional with taxes gave, you know, 21 percent of business owners who sought help with their taxes, peace of mind. And another 20 percent chose to receive assistance because they knew a professional tax preparer would be more apt to find d deductions, you know, which can offset the cost of. Um, somebody helping you to prepare. So we have at Zen Business, we have a low cost expense tracking and tax filing offering uh, to make it easy for someone to keep up their books and eventually file tax. We also like will connect people with bookkeepers if they need help. So, you know, something I'll also say is that it's really important to keep track of everything. So even with an accountant's assistance, you know, as a business, you need to provide detailed financial data. And so just staying organized throughout the year, tracking all of your expenses, your income uh, makes it just easier and uh, saves you time when it comes to doing your taxes. And a lot of times, like, 
you know, it makes sense to hire somebody who can help with this. You know, if you find all this like daunting or overwhelming, you know, you can just, you know, find uh, somebody who can help. And, you know, it's just important to do it right um, over time. You know, you could, you know, do your taxes on your own if uh, you got to the point of feeling comfortable. But, um, you know, at Zen Business, we can also be that help, right? Like we've pioneered this work-free compliance product, which I talked mm -hmm. about for taking care of the um, annual reports. We send you alerts about important compliance and filing events. We, you know, support in this annual filing. Uh, we provide expert support should you miss a filing event and need to regain your good standing. So things like that. Great, great advice. So um, let's talk a little bit about intellectual property. How do I protect my IP of my business and the design of my products? A lot of the folks out here are, um, you know, developing products, they're selling online. So what do they need to know about protecting their IP? <laughs> Yeah, it's a complicated topic. Um, you know, intellectual property can take many forms, including a brand name, a logo, uh, you know, inventions, which, um, you know, all define a little more specifically. And then, uh, you know, there could be like literary or artistic work. So, I mean, it really depends on what it is. Um, so let's talk about the different types of protection that you do have available. So the first is copyright. So copyright is the expression of an idea in a fixed documented form. So think like a literary or artistic or musical creation. Um, and in theory, the originator of a piece of material is automatically the owner of the copyright. So there is some protection there, but you know, this doesn't really apply so much if you're creating a product, right? Maybe more just the way that you're describing the product. Um, there's a trademark, you know, so a trademark is a business focused mm -hmm. form of intellectual property protection. So this is one of the most common forms of intellectual property that people deal with. And, um, you know, you need a trademark to legally reserve and register a business name um, for tax purposes to, you know, protect from other people using it and from theft and it can also protect brands from competition that too closely mirrors yeah. your trademark material um, there's also patents right and this is kind of where you start to get into the question of you know does a product that somebody makes meet the bar of a patent um, was there something in it that was novel enough that would warrant that uh, and a patent protects the intellectual property rights of an invention and so critically, like unlike copyrights, you do not automatically own the patent to an invention simply because you created it. You must be the first person to apply for the patent and then it needs to be approved. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely the most protection um, that you might get from like a invention that you have. It's, uh, it's also just a very long and intensive. Yeah process, right? There's also trade secrets. So this is the last one. And so think of a trade secret as anything um, that has to do with like recipes or formulas or techniques that can't be easily protected under either of the three previous categories. And in order to receive federal protection, a trade secret must have commercial value and cannot simply just be an idea with uh, no applicable weight. So those are really your opportunities for protection. All right. So those are some things for our digital entrepreneurs to consider. Okay. My business is up and running. I'm compliant. My IP is protected. Let's talk about how to grow a business. Um, what are the questions I should be asking or things I should be considering when I'm deciding to hire a full-time employee uh, versus a freelancer or contractor? Um, when I'm positioning myself for growth, do you have any advice uh, with respect to adding new employees? Yeah, I mean, I think the very first question to ask yourself is, you know, how much money am I making today? And um, a lot of the times business owners will start companies and, you know, largely use their own time to get the business off the ground. Now, you know, if you've um, really found kind of a product market fit and your product itself is doing, uh, you're, you, you know, you're finding people to purchase it, um, then, you know, it definitely starts to make sense to bring in some people to help you to scale up your operation. I'll talk through some options for that. 
Um, there's also a lot of ways to use freelancers to help you with a variety of things that you might otherwise not be very good at. Um, and, and part of it may be time, like freelancers can help you with things that you don't have time for. But a lot of it time, it's things that you might not be very good at. So like maybe it's, you know, creating your website, you know, maybe that's not something you're great at. Or maybe it's uh, taking photos of your products or uh, coming up with a really great social media ad or, um, you know, describing your products in a compelling way, like through copywriting, things like this. So these are little small, discrete projects that, you know, without much money, you could, you know, get a freelancer. Um, to help you with. And so then you have to, once you're at a point where you're trying to figure out whether or not to actually have staff, um, then deciding between a full-time employee versus, you know, freelancers, contractors really comes down to your business's needs. Um, but here's a few things to consider when making staffing decisions. So the first is, does your workload fluctuate frequently? So if yes, then it probably makes more sense to hire contractors mm -hmm. when you're at your busiest. Um, if you're looking for more kind of reliable workers, then, you know, it can make sense to hire somebody more permanently um, who can help at all times of the year. Now, I will say right now, um, you know, hiring is difficult for uh, everybody. There's a bit of a, a labor shortage or you could just call it like a mismatch between what people want to do and what people employers are looking for. So, um, you know, this may also kind of lend itself to wanting to find people who are contractors who may be more interested in a flexible um, working schedule. The other thing is, um, yeah, you just want to figure out whether or not you really like need somebody full time. And is your goal, and, and lastly, and is, is your goal to save money or save time? Because if, you're, if your goal is to save money, then, you know, maybe get a contractor, maybe it's part time and it's just as needed. Um, but if you're trying to really save time, offset your, you know, personal schedule a bit, then, you know, a full time employee could be more beneficial. Great. Um, so to follow up on that, talking about growth, how about sources of funding? Uh, what are resources available um, to our new digital entrepreneurs that are looking for a little um, surge of capital? Yeah, yeah, this is um, this is a difficult one. So, um, you know, determining how to get the money to start a business is one of the first challenges most startup entrepreneurs face. It is probably the biggest challenge that entrepreneurs face. So, um, people, most people. Um, and we've surveyed this and it's very high, like as high as 80 plus percent of people uh, use their personal credit card to fund their business. This is the most common mm -hmm. form of um, funding it. You know, other places that people might turn to is their personal savings, their friends and family. Um you know, the, the average business might take around $10,000 to start. It depends on what type of business you're in. But, you know, that's like kind of a good benchmark number. And, you know, typically people can access that through some sort of personal credit facility, like a credit card. The interest rate on that is very high, though. Mm -hmm. So then you run into this, you know, issue of, you know, being in, in, in debt. And so this really raises the stakes for the business that you've, you started, you know, this is, this is why it's the, in some ways, the biggest first challenge that entrepreneurs face, because it's the moment when, you know, you really are all in uh, and, and you um, are, are putting a, a fair amount of risk. So there are other ways to secure funding. Um, oftentimes you're going to need to personally guarantee your business loans especially in the beginning part of a business. So even these online lenders like OnDeck or Cabbage who provide a source of, you know, short-term loans and lines of credit, um, you know, they may make sense for some businesses who qualify uh, for this type of funding. Also, I mean, there are bank loans, you know, you can go to your bank as a source for uh, funding your financing needs. It's a little bit easier if, um, there are receivables against which to, um, uh, it's called collateralize the debt, but like mm -hmm. to, um, off, uh, to, to, to prove to the bank that, you know, you have money that's coming in and that money that's coming in, maybe, 
you uh, signed a really big uh, relationship with Nordstrom and Nordstrom has this huge purchase order and you need to go secure this product and you're going to get paid from Nordstrom, but it's going to take a little bit of time and, you know, but there's some sort of guarantee element to it. You know, a bank might help you kind of, you know, offset the cash flow in the, in the middle. Typically you're going to have to personally guarantee a lot of this stuff. There's two other ways. Um, one is around crowdfunding. So, mm -hmm. you know, you've uh, heard of crowdfunding before, and this is a way to raise uh, money from people in the general public who will back your company or your product. This is actually a really great way to get some funding as a, um, a first starting e-commerce business, especially if like your product actually is doing something interesting and, and novel and that helps people in a meaningful way. You know, if you get that in front of people, then they're like, oh yeah, like I actually would, would really like this, you know, um, and, and this can be a good way to also get like initial first customers, you can go through the actual process of getting investors. So, um, you know, in this case, you are going to need to structure your business, not as an LLC, but more as like a C corporation. Um, but, but for, for that, you know, then you could get angel investors or even venture capital investors, uh, who, you know, will take a, you know, a piece of equity in the company, um, in exchange for the, the financing. This is typically the most difficult way to get money, right? And, and, and so um, it's, uh, it's probably not the right first place to start unless um, you really know that space well. I think I'll say too, just as a little bit of caveat, it's like, you know, what I've discussed here today, you know, are some of the fundamentals of starting and building a business. And, you know, Zen Business can help listeners do that, but you know, Zen Business does not provide legal advice and I am not an attorney. So we always encourage our customers to seek advice from professional tax and legal advisors who can, you know, partner with entrepreneurs on their journey. Great. Okay. That leads me to my final question. What parting advice do you have for our entrepreneurs and where can they go to learn more about Zen Business? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my parting uh, advice for entrepreneurs is to stop waiting. You know, if you want to start a new business, now is the best time to do that. You know, it will be hard, uh, but you won't regret chasing your dreams. And, you know, at uh, Zen Business, it's our mission to change the way people launch a business. You know, we offer this step-by-step -step guided instruction to help entrepreneurs on their journey from business idea to successful reality. And, you know, no other company has made it this easy for people looking to start a service business or product business to turn their idea into a money-making business. And, you know, we're here to teach people how to market their products, find customers efficiently, you know, run their businesses so they can spend more time doing what they love, which is providing the actual uh, service or building products that they're building versus spending time managing their business and, you know, our ambition is large, but we're here to help the millions of people create a better life. And, you know, people can do that by visiting us at zenbusiness.com. Great. So thank you, Ryan, for joining us today, sharing your insights with us. Um, I'm very excited to go out and share all of this with the entrepreneurs out there. Uh, again, I encourage our audience, if you have questions, drop them in the comments box. We'll do our best to answer them. Um, don't forget to get your applications in. Uh, for the alibaba.com grants program we are running in partnership with hello alice uh, 50 deserving businesses will receive a ten thousand dollar grant based on their innovative product ideas and go-to-market strategy uh, appl applications close on october 21st so there's still time uh, so i encourage everyone to to get out there and we're here to help you uh, achieve your entrepreneurial dreams so thanks ryan and thanks everyone thanks kate